No. Mm -hmm. These are projections, but I guess the one thing that we should be considering is if they do change and if this continues, the shutting down of various things. I don't think that they're going to shut down outdoor um, camps and stuff, but maybe the adult rec programs and stuff like that that has classes. Um, do we have a contingency for the funding that we thought we were going to be getting if those sorts of things do get canceled in terms of how we might make those things up? So that I can hardly hear you, and I'm sitting right next to you. Sorry. That's okay. Would you repeat what you're asking? Yeah, I'm just asking if we have some contingencies for the programs that we have that will be going on indoors that are like classes and stuff that we have been holding and we have budget items that we're thinking we're going to be getting money from them and just what are we going to do if we don't get that Well, money? a couple answers. First, then, we're on a direct line of communication with both the county OES office as well as HHS. We're following their leads in terms of recommendations uh, and where they stand and they are doing a very good job monitoring and communicating about the situation. Uh, in terms of the set contingency plans, no, not at this time, but you also have to remember that if certain programs, camps, uh, adult programs don't happen, there's also expense that is related with those that won't be there as well. So it's not like just that revenue disappears, but the expense right. stays. Uh, so those are all, I mean, this is a new world for everybody. Those are all bridges we'll, we will all have to cross. But yes, I mean, we have talked about these items. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, you know, we're looking at it. This is going into next year. So uh, if we're continuing this into that far in time, we're going to have much larger issues in hand here. Okay. Yeah, a lot of these things are falling into the category of opportunity cost. Yeah. And that is, you know, we've got, you know, capacity to generate revenue, et cetera, right. et cetera, but we don't have the opportunity. Yeah, no, so. I, I agree. I just want to make sure that everybody knew we were aware and planning. Uh, it's not, it has not gone unnoticed. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of hard uh, <clears throat> to not notice it. Um, okay, I, I, you know, I, I reviewed this um, you know, fairly exhaustively, but you know, it is very preliminary. Uh, preliminary with a capital P. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not quite as far along at this point in time as I would uh, hope to be, especially, uh, I mean, this has actually evolved since, you know, this was as of Wednesday of last week, so almost a week ago, so obviously more work has been put into it, uh, mm -hmm. but I had to stop for this purpose on Wednesday because there's a lot of other work that goes into formatting it, data input, and getting it ready to be published. Um, for this draft here, you know, some of the things that are in here that are um, pretty well set, um, and I tried to make point of this in my memo, uh, are some of the larger drivers, especially on the expense side. Um, Full-time staffing has been updated throughout the, in terms of what models are anticipated for next year, uh, pensions that are related to that. The one payroll-related cost that isn't set yet is on the uh, workers' comp side, and that's simply because we haven't gotten the updated information from the carrier yet. Usually we have it by now. I actually call them and say, hey, how come we haven't got this yet? And they're taking a slightly different approach. Um, agencies on uh, the last day of February were required to submit all of their estimations for next year. So they've gotten all of those, and they are waiting now to calculate those out before they establish if there's any other rates. And then obviously a big factor for us will be our experience modification factor, which uh, takes into account on a worker's comp side claims paid on average over the last three years against industry norm. Uh, ours this particular year is fairly high, so once we get all of that information, that line will change. Um, in terms of all the rep program drivers, those will be updated uh, this week, next week, and uh, uh, the park and rec budgets will be uh, updated and go into the uh, the Park and Recognition Packet, so we'll have that done by that time. Uh, we've just all got kind of a little backed up, people come out, illnesses, everything else, so, so we just haven't had the chance to get far enough along. That said, final budget doesn't approve for another two months, uh, so it obviously will all be brought up to speed. I just tried to get some of the primary uh, things that were known that didn't, uh, uh, well, that represented large chunk costs, obviously, staffing is you know, one of the big ones, pensions, one of the big ones, those are some of our primary expenditure drivers. 
Um, I did update and go through and uh, looked at on, I, I didn't do anything with taxes yet, uh, including allocations. That's why you kind of see some wonky totals uh, of revenue versus expense by department because I used the taxes to balance those out once we know. I actually spoke with the budget director from the county and got their projections as to what they are thinking. Um, obviously, that's a countywide number, and you look at a very small pocket like ours, it's different. And uh, actually, just today, started analyzing you know, three year trends and year over year. So, those will get updated uh, by the next round, too. So, we'll have a better sense of what's going on there. Uh, but the special taxes I have updated based uh, primarily on what the updated numbers were. Uh, from a data perspective from last year, because those always uh, usually increase. You know, one is based on square footage. Well, people add on, things happen, square footage tends to grow. Um, and then uh, as other units come on, our parts change to some degree. So those numbers are updated, and they anticipate, uh, even though it won't come on until the next board meeting, uh, the CPI for this year was 2.5%. Uh, so they, uh, they, I did factor that into their <clears throat> easily be that's the Bay Area. So Bay Area uh, up year over year as of uh, uh, December end of the year, which is on a different point. Very good. Yeah, yeah. So I tried to get a lot of that in there. Um, and then I didn't really do anything with the actuals column. Right now those do run through February, uh, but January, February haven't been thoroughly reviewed. Uh, so those are subject to some levels of journaling. I mean, the numbers aren't going to change a heck of a lot with the exception of some of these uh, that get contra uh, Health benefits has a contra that goes to it because we withhold from every employee's paycheck. Uh, we haven't journaled that back yet. Um, as well as uh, some things like on the memberships and dues and uh, other items like that. So they'll change a little bit, but, but right now the numbers that are in there are mostly just to look at it and say, okay, here's what our 1920 budget was, here's what we're doing at approximately two thirds throughout the year, um, and then here's where 2021 is. And so this will change a lot by the next meeting. That said, a lot of the primary drivers have certainly been updated. Does the county, um, is the county usually in their estimates of tax revenues and things like that, or do you expect that by next meeting we'll have a fairly good handle on that? Um, I think we have a good handle on what their projections are. Mm -hmm. um, that said, there. I, I mean, I, I guess what are you asking? Are you asking me about projections? Or are you asking me about actuals? Um, no, I'm asking you about projections. Uh, well, I mean, they project out every year. Right now, they're projecting just for current security, which is the primary yeah. uh, property tax, at five percent countywide. Uh, we don't necessarily experience that, but I will. Uh, what I tend to do is uh, soften that number a little bit, and then I look at what uh, we are actually projecting for at the end of this year, based on the 55% uh, that we collected in December. And then I, uh, you know, usually we do something more along the lines of a two and a half to three percent growth, uh, just because again our sample size is very small, and the county as a whole tends to outpace Marinwood uh, specifically. Right, understood. And it seems to me that there's been at least one year in the past, recent past, where they were a little bit. A couple of years ago, they didn't really put out projections, um, and you know, also keeping in mind that the county does two-year budgets. Mm. Um, so they do it, they put together a biannual budget with a uh, amendment uh, usually on the in between year. Got okay. it. Um, but uh, I literally uh, just this past week talked to the budget manager directly, uh, and he was the one who told me that you know on the secure, but all uh, the smaller ones they don't put out projections on those things yeah. anymore. Yeah, that's why I just do a trend analysis mm -hmm. and look at uh, usually no more than three years. What have the last three years been for each one of the individual tax lines? And that gives us a pretty good sense. Uh, and then I try to be a little bit conservative because I would rather uh, under budget on revenue and overperform than the other way around. Understood. I wanted to comment, I'm pleased to see that the uh, relationship between the district and the water devils has been truncated and uh, they are now doing their own payroll, et cetera, so. Yeah, yeah, so and that was another one of the big changes when you look in here, um, you know, for years and years and years, we were kind of a makeshift payroll agent for them. Um, and both agencies have kind of walked away from that and they are doing their own, uh, and with that, uh, you know, they, uh, their own workers' comp insurance. And so it's more of a use agreement at this point in time, right. uh, as it should be. To be quite honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it works out well for both agencies. They're actually saving money doing it this way. Exactly, yeah. 
Any more questions or comments? I'm good with this. Yeah. Anything else? Again, my apologies. I wish I would have had it a little bit farther along. Um, just wait as this time. Understood. Okay. Questions from the public on the draft budget? Stephen. Yeah. Um, so we've all had a weather report, and the weather report is our hurricanes bearing down on us or another natural disaster. Now, I, I don't think we should panic, but I do think it is the responsible thing to have a contingency plans in place. So, uh, some of the things that I see probable is uh, that camps will be canceled uh, and our uh, uh, firemen are going to be working extra hard uh, doing uh, ambulance uh, calls. Um, you know, the data that we're getting, it's all mixed up all over the board. Probably the safety guys have more current information than I, I would, but uh, uh, they say there is a 1% mortality rate. We're in a, a community of 6,000 people. That would be 60 deaths that we would maybe experience in a very short period of time. That's, well, that's, that's a lot of ambulance calls, a lot of heartache out there. Um, even though it's uh, hurting certain populations. I'm not suggesting that you throw out everything that you have here, but I do think that saying, getting a good what if uh, uh, response together as a, is, is the responsible thing to do as opposed to hopefully the county will, will tell us what to do. I think we should, we should have this in place um, I believe, I'm going to guess, that the schools are going to be closed down within a couple of weeks, maybe after spring break, um, just the way the case is going here. The cases are actually doubling every two days, and if you think about that math, it's pretty astounding. Now we're going to, it's, it, it's going to pass. Uh, hopefully during the warm months, maybe uh, it'll go away. We don't really know at this point, but uh, I mean, this is the subject of maybe a special meeting uh, to discuss the options here. No, nothing really should be approved with this budget until you have that contingent budget set aside because it will affect virtually everything, manpower, uh, you know, how many kids are running around here, all kinds of things. Public safety is very important. I won't bring up the public safety issue, well, I will bring up the public safety issues with the, the lack of uh, uh, basic video surveillance, locking up the bathrooms, other safety concerns. I don't know how often things get sanitized, but there sh should be, as of today, in place, you know, crews really making sure everything is spick and span. Um, I believe children and, and the elderly are most at risk and we have a heck of a lot of kids and, and a bunch of elderly people. So let's do the responsible thing. This is the leadership that you're all called on to do and uh, you know, make us proud. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Anything else?